You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Everyone and welcome to episode number 118 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea. I'm the host of the Just Japan podcast, a weekly podcast that brings to you all kinds of cool stuff about Japan. And this is a special episode. Hey, we've got two episodes in one week. That's right. Episode number 117, the Hanshin Tigers dropped just a few days ago, and we're back with another episode. I just, I had to do it, guys. I had to do it. I mean, I really had no choice, you know, my hands were tied behind my back. Um, in episode number 116 of the podcast, it was uh, titled Pokemon No in Japan because Japanese people, foreigners living in Japan, were getting frustrated with the fact that Pokemon Go, although released in many other countries uh, much earlier, still wasn't available in Japan. And then just two and a half days later, it was launched in Japan. Now, when I'm recording this right now, this little bit, it's Friday, the 28th of July. Sorry, wait, 28th? 29th of July. And uh, the month is coming to an end. And it was one week ago today that Pokemon Go was released in Japan. And hey, the people are all over the place doing it. Zombies are among us. Wandering around, staring at their phones, riding on bicy- driving along on bicycles with their phone in their hand in a dangerous fashion, doing things they shouldn't do, and doing things maybe they should do. Um, so in that episode, I had Andrew Higgins on talking all about Pokemon No and the fact the lack of Pokemon. So uh, he came back on the podcast. Uh, A few days later, after Pokemon Go had dropped, and myself and Andrew had both been playing Pokemon for a few days, Pokemon Go, and, uh, you know, I get Andrew back on, we we start chatting about Pokemon Go in Japan. Um, So, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a shorter episode. It's a double double down, two episodes in one week. Um, I want to remind you folks, of course, you can always find the the, the Just Japan podcast. Everything about the Just Japan podcast is over at JustJapanStuff.com justjapanstuff.com that is the home of the podcast where you can find all the links the itunes the soundcloud the libsyn the blah, 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 all that stuff so go to justjapanstuff.com and uh let's just jump right into our interview with andrew talking about playing pokemon go here in japan <laughs> okay folks okay so hey it's kevin here in japan with the just japan podcast and Back with me yet again is Mr. Andrew Higgins. Andrew, thank you for for being here. Hey, thanks for having me back on. Yeah, well, I mean, I I have to have you back on. This is very necessary. <laughs> it seems like such a long time ago. It seems like such a long time ago. Um, uh, on Wednesday of last week, we recorded an episode, or actually, I, I uploaded an episode called Pokemon No in Japan, um, because. It was true. We had no Pokemon Go in Japan. It was a sad. It was a sad time. It was and a all sad of time. Plans. It was a dark time. <laughs> there was a lot of unhappy people. A lot of gnashing of teeth. Yes. In the in the biblical term terminology, <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of very unhappy people, uh, including myself and you. Um, but not just not just the two of us. <laughs> a lot more people were unhappy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because uh, many parts of the world had Pokemon Go, but Japan, the mm. birthplace of Pokemon, yes, of, of Pikachu and his. His motley crew yes. didn't didn't have it, and so we we made the episode, uh, uploaded it, and uh, it went up on Wednesday, and um, by Friday we had had more more than a thousand downloads of that one episode. That's uh, awesome. Right now we're about two thousand downloads, actually, we're hovering cool. around two thousand downloads. But but something has changed. Oh no! What has changed since last Wednesday? Pokemon goes out. It's out. It's here. Yay! And when did Pokemon Go <laughs> drop in Japan, good sir? Uh, on Friday, wasn't it? Friday morning. Friday morning, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it was around. Oh, I found. I saw a message 
around 10 o'clock on Twitter. That's was, roughly around the time I was literally, I was, we were, I was in the teacher's room. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm at an international school and we, we do have quite a few Japanese support staff and, and teachers actually as well at our school. But, you know, of course, um, you know, a lot of the teachers are not Japanese and a lot of the teachers are, are well tuned into what's going on and what's not mm-hmm. going on. And um, I it was literally I'm sitting at my desk and there's, there's not many teachers in the teacher's room at that moment. It's the middle of the morning. A lot of people are in class teaching and stuff, but I have to have a period off and I was in in front of my computer and literally it was a. Uh, we have a junior high school as well, and the junior uh, grade seven teacher was like, "It dropped! It dropped! It dropped!" And everyone's like, "Like what?" He's like, "In front of his computer, Pokemon's here!" And um, uh, like literally, I just like clicked on the app store, the Japan app store, my you know the app, boom, because yeah. I hadn't. Da- I I have a Canadian app store account too, but I I, I just decided I'm not, I'll download this when it's here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so um, I clicked on the app store, and boom, there it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was around around that time. And, and I just happened to be on Twitter looking around and I was like, you know, because for the past week or so, it's been, oh, is it out? Or or, you, or someone's like, oh, it's out now. And you go check and it's not really out. So I just kind of assumed this was another one of those false. A lot of these are really know. kind of fakey apps, mm, right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like Pokemon Go screen cap app. Yeah. <laughs> Take take pictures of your Pokemon Go, even though it already has. Even a though you can do that with your phone anyway. Yeah, you don't need an app. Um, so yeah, so then I just I just loaded up the app, and all of a sudden things started filling in on my map, and I was like, okay, I need to find pants. I need to get in the shower. I need to I need to get outside I need right to now. Find <laughs> pants. <laughs> hey, I'm on, Where I'm are on my vacation. Pants? I need pants. <laughs> I'm on vacation, man. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, there's there's spots around me, and I I need to get out. Where where do I go first? Because there's you know two sides. Panic like, and indecision and indecisiveness. Yeah. And is there gonna be are there gonna be other people out there? Like what's do I what's have to hit look, them? What are you yeah. steal my Pokemon? Are we gonna have fights? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need I need to be prepared for this. <laughs> do I need brass mu- knuckles? Do I yeah. need like a sock with a roll of quarters in it? <laughs> Baseball bat with like nails into the end of it. <laughs> I've drag, been prepared. Shall I drag my Iron Maiden behind yeah. me? <laughs> Things I have. Um, you gotta come prepared, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it happened. Like, you know, that dropped, and then like I was like, oh my god, and then like, of course, they they throw you the bone initially, mm. right? The moment you like log in and stuff, like a Pokemon will of course appear in front of you. Yes. And then you're like, yeah. So everyone's like cheering because we're all catching a Pokemon in our <laughs> teacher's room. And then we're all like twitching and itching and, and stuff. And I'm, I realize like, oh, I've got to teach next class. <laughs> ah! So and what I, did you what did you go with with your your starting Pokemon? It was a Charmander. Oh, okay. All right. I went for the same one. The, the, the first one that popped up was a, a Charmander on my neighbor's desk. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, the teacher teaches across from me, um, and then we, uh, and then oh yeah, but but then then I had some downtime in the afternoon. I had a, a two hour block break time, and I went for a walk. Nice. And um, the fu- the funny part was, um, you know, I walked out and I went across the road, and there was a uh, there was like a, a pokey stop not that far away from the school. Mm. And I still don't know what all this stuff is really. I'm like, oh, what is this? What does this do? Yeah. There's there and, is like then, a well, little the, there's like a little tip section on the on the app itself. Ah, okay, which I haven't read. Okay, I, yeah, I, I hadn't actually read it until about ten minutes ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, this would have answered <laughs> like a couple of the basic questions that I had early on. Ah, okay, I think I, I think figured I figured out. a lot of stuff. Mm. But um, the ironic thing was, as I was in a pokey stop collecting my first pokeballs, I heard screaming. I heard people screaming my name. <laughs> from a distance and then i look over and it was a group of the of junior high school students at our school yelling my name and they're like are you playing pokemon go are you playing pokemon go and they were like jumping up and down in the schoolyard behind the fence i was like oh my god i'm so embarrassed nice (laughs) but i am yes um and then uh you know i went on to discover a few things after that and uh so that was friday it is now sunday Mm. evening as we talk yes and um you know uh i got the family so i can't dedicate myself as much as some people have and i think that's a good thing 
I've yeah, seen, I've, I've seen some crazy stuff online, man. I've seen some people in Japan on Twitter mm. and Facebook who've just hit insane levels. Oh yeah, like they, they basically couple... it's very clear. Like from the moment they've woken up till they've gone to bed late at night, that's what they've yeah. been doing. Yeah, there were a couple in my area that I was just like, how how did you get that high? Like I'm not even. I mean, I'm like level eight right now, but that's what I'm at. I'm level eight. I'm on the I'm on the cusp of nine. Yeah, yeah. I think I need one nine. or two more Pokemon. I'm at nine. But but I'm I'm level eight as well. But I mean I'm looking at some of them right now. There's a couple level elevens and twelves and yeah yeah there was thirteens yeah and... yeah 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 I know like a friend of the show Kansai PJ I think he's eleven or twelve right now wow um and there was like someone else I saw who was like level fifteen she was um one of one of my uh, former colleagues um who now lives in Osaka he put up a screen cap of his walking running app. He walked 14.97 kilometers yesterday. Wow. Playing Pokemon Go. That's that's crazy. I think I did. It was like 20,000 steps on his, like, yeah. the, the app, the screen cap said, like, 19,900 whatever steps. Actually, that is friend of the show, Patrick, who was on the uh, the hockey episode. Oh, okay. Patrick, if you're listening. Man, you had a hardcore day yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had about 14,000 steps today. Wow, well, that's that's a dang. <laughs> so okay, so you probably walked about ten kilometers. Yeah, about six six point thirteen six point one three miles. I went today. Yeah, okay, so that's uh, so, six miles is ten k. Yeah. So you 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 walked more than ten k today. Yeah. Good job, I, buddy. Yeah, thanks. It doesn't <laughs> like, and honestly, I kind of get really caught up into it because, like, especially on Saturday, I walked around um, a couple neighborhoods that I hadn't walked around before. Okay. And and kind of was discovering <laughs> parts of my town that because I have a car, so a lot of times when I go places, it's just jump in the car and drive there, and you miss a lot of the small little things that you drive past just because you're not paying attention to them. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's I mean, for for many years I was a runner, mm. and I mean I knew every nook and cranny of Kobe, and everybody like, yeah. how the heck do you know so much about Kobe? I'm like, well. When you're running all these times, and you want to make it interesting, mm-hmm. I don't like running the same place all the time. Yeah. I want to learn new things, and it was like the the YouTuber me too wanted to show new things. So yeah, uh, yeah. of course I got an iPhone with me with a running app, but then I'm always I've got my camera with me. Um, but uh, you know I'm I'm going to be running a marathon again this year. I'm going to be running the Kobe Marathon, so I went for a training run yesterday, and I will be re- you know I'll be honest, <laughs> maybe just maybe I was looking for a few Pokemon. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. And did I find any? No. Actually, it was like I ran almost five kilometers. Didn't find one goddamn Pokemon. Not even one, man. They were all hiding. Yeah. Well, they were clearly for me. But um, but I ran and I I had the app open a lot. My phone got hot. Mm. <laughs> yeah, my the battery on my phone is is shot at this point. Like, and it and it wasn't because of Pokemon Go. It was you know just a two year old phone. What kind of phone are you using? Uh, I have an iPhone six, and okay. so it's coming up on two. Well, the years, iPhone so. six and six S batteries really suck. Yeah, yeah, they do. You do. You a, need. You basically need like a like a a life pack with you, like a some kind of like charging battery pack with you. Yeah, I have a ten thousand four hundred milliamp hour uh, re- rechargeable battery that I carry with me, so I've taken that out with me um, and only needed it a couple times, but yeah. It's well, I mean, because you're using GPS too, like, right? And I mean, I, I'm new to the Pokemon thing, but I'm very familiar with GPS apps, like, because I, I use so many running apps, and those right. running apps they're massively hard on your battery life. Yeah. So, you really, um, like when I would do long runs, I would always bring a battery with me, like a, like a charger, like a kind of thing, um, yeah, which I don't have for my new phone. Um, or not, I mean, relatively new phone, my success, but I, I, I should, I should get one because yeah, they're relatively cheap. Yeah, um, they are. And I, I do have a holiday coming up in August and, um, maybe more Pokemon will be sought. Yeah. I mean, you can pick them up off Amazon for around 3000 yen. You can get a good, a good one. So yeah, even, I mean, even just at the local, like Yamada Denki kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, okay, so all right, so Pokemon, talk talk mm. to us about your experiences. So it dropped on Friday. Yeah. Um, just in a nutshell, tell us about like your your Pokemon Go experience so far this weekend. It's been really positive. Like it, the first day, so on Friday when it came out, I walked around town. Um, 
I ran into only maybe two or three people. Oh, really? I, um, I, I saw so – just cycling home on Friday night. Mm. I mean, mind you, I live in Kobe, which is like a city of a million and a half people. Yeah. I saw loads of people doing it. Like just on my way home, oh, like, wow. like tons of like I'm cycling across Kobe Bridge, and there's all these salarymen like with their phones out <laughs> in big giddy groups doing it. And then that's awesome. So there's like several universities now in Port Island where I live, and like mm. on Saturday, like we, we went to a farmers market in the morning, and we came back. There was this like massive group of university students on the same train, and they were all on Pokemon Go. <laughs> and even that's... like last, like walking around my neighborhood at night. I'm seeing like I saw like several like literally I'm not even exaggerating families together. Yeah. With like yeah. the teenage boy leading and the rest of them just like yay. Just Yeah, I saw that up. I saw that more on on Saturday and and today like just m- more people out and ran into a lot more people. Um I actually went down again to I walked down to McDonald's. Um somebody had put out a lure so like at Pokestops you can have a lure that will actually attract more Pokemon and it's for anybody. So anybody can show up there. Mm. And, uh, so I walked up is, and is that, were... is the lure of the incense? No. So the incense, the... The... I used the incense yeah. last night and that was kind of fun. Yeah. That's I'm just, just like, Hey, you. Yo, they're all coming to me. Yeah. That's just for you. So a lure is, it's basically incense, but it's for incense for like a location. Did you put it at a stop or a gym? Um, you put it at a pokey stop. Oh, okay. So like when you go to the pokey stop, it'll have the name of, across the top. And then there's like a little white oval underneath of that. And if you tap on that, it says you can put a Pokestop module here. And if you do that, if you're close enough to it and you do that, then for 30 minutes, it basically does the same thing that a incense incense does. does. Yeah. Except anybody that's in the area can take advantage of it. Nice. Um, So I went down there um, Saturday and – or was that this morning? Either way, walked down to McDonald's and uh, somebody had put one out there. And so I walked up and there were like half a dozen like junior high students, weren't even my students, <laughs> but they were just like, hey, are you playing Pokemon Go? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, all right, so are we. <laughs> so I was like, what team are you on? You know, they had a couple different teams and like we were kind of talking and they were like, oh, what, what Pokemon do you have? And I was like, oh, OK, that's really cool. What do you have? And so and then, you know, a few minutes later, they were like, all right, see you later. And, I, you know, they went one way. I went the other way and, you know, hit up a couple more stops on the way home. And well, I mean, that's that's the amazing thing, like the, the diversity of the people using it right now here in Japan. Yeah. It is not a geek thing at all. Yeah, it's like, it's it's, everybody a, is. it's just a thing like no joke. Like today, um, uh, it's Sunday right now. We're recording this episode on the 24th of, of July. Um, for all of you that are listening, you know I am a Kobe City public relations ambassador. So I'm a social media ambassador, a volunteer guy who tries to attract more people, to, foreign visitors to come to Japan. Or not Japan. Well, I mean, yes, to Japan, but to Kobe <laughs> more specifically and, and enjoy the cool city I live in. Um, and we had a special event at the uh, Suma Aqualife Park, which formerly known as Suma Aquarium. Mm. And... Uh, uh, a group of about a dozen PR ambassadors we met there today. And we had this like really amazing behind the scenes tour, oh, which was cool. really oh my god, so amazing! I I'm, saw some of your pictures on Instagram. Oh, was... oh just just wait! <laughs> like most of the my, my pictures and video are all on my uh, my my Nikon mm. DSLR, which I haven't even dumped on my computer yet. Nice. Um, and a, a very cool video will come later on in the week, um, but. And what was really amazing, because, you know, I'm a big, like, ecology weenie. I'm all <laughs> about, like, animals and conservation and all that stuff. And I, I, I we had we got to interview the director of the aquarium. And I said, um, you know, I, I, I see some Japanese people around walking, you know, here wearing volunteer shirts. Would it be possible for, like, a foreigner who lives in the city who speaks minimal japanese to be able to volunteer here and help learn about fish and aquatic mm. life and stuff and he's like absolutely oh that's he awesome. was like any time we'd love to have foreigners volunteer here and then he was like do you want to now and i'm like <laughs> oh. i kind of got and, some pokemon to catch right and now. <laughs> i would love to but my schedule's a bit busy in life but yeah i gotta go back to pokemon um yeah let's, let's capture fake creatures instead of helping the world there you um go. <laughs> but uh 
what was really interesting, Asuma Aquarium is on like the Suma Beach area, and there's just like tons of different people around here. And I even I saw um, extremely attractive Japanese women in bikinis walking around playing Pokemon Go. And I'm not even joking. It was a shocking. And I'm <laughs> very happy that I witnessed that. Just, just let me know that, you know, there is hope in the world for things. Yes. <laughs> um, and and on the train, I, I, I believe I, I made a, a tweet earlier today that there was literally, there was a woman who was sitting like a little bit ne- like next to me. But I mean, the train is pretty much empty. So she was, you know, probably like a meter away from me. Um, woman looked like a supermodel. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. just shockingly beautiful. And she's playing Pokemon Go. Well, Kansai does does have a lot of beautiful women. It, it, Kansai does have a lot of beautiful women. You hear that, everyone out there? Um, but um, but yeah, but she's playing Pokemon Go. It was wicked. <laughs> yeah, like like we were talking about in the other podcast. Like it just everybody seems to be getting into it. Like there's not this oh only kids Gamer or geeks only or dorks game, or, or yeah yeah. Like I mean, we had a festival tonight in town, um, and so I walked down. I was walking to one of the Pokestops and ran into a whole group of my teachers from my school. And I was like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, well, we're running. They were doing like patrols for the festival. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> and a couple of the other teachers were like, they like ran, they were having a meeting and they like ran over to me and they were like, oh, what do you have? And like they pulled out their phones. <laughs> we were like comparing. Do you get a Pikachu like, yet? Yeah. Do you have a Psyduck? How many Psyducks do you have? One. I actually got one. I hatched one. <laughs> oh, okay. I've, I've got a bunch of Psyducks, man. They, they seem to be pretty common around my part. Man, maybe it's because you're closer to water than, than I am. No, actually, that's probably why. <laughs> I, got a, I got a giant clam creature tonight. That was fun. <laughs> um, but, so it was just really funny just running into some of my my teachers, and, and we were just comparing. And then, So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to walk with you guys back down to, to where the festival is at. And so I walked down to the walked to the station, and and when we came up over the station, there were a couple of stops in a gym, and there were just people sitting on the floor or sitting on the ground outside, um, listening to music and playing Pokemon Go. Cool, man. And and then you know, and then I went to the festival and and walked around. Like I had my phone on, but I wasn't actively, really actively playing. I was just you know, accumulating miles. <laughs> no. And. And then, you know, ran into a whole bunch of my students and they were like, oh, are you playing Pokemon Go? I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I am. Um, yeah, actually, um, yesterday morning, I went to um, a local organic farmer's market, mm. which is a nice thing, a, a buy local uh, farmer's market. One of the things I'm promoting as a Kobe Peer ambassador. Wah, wah, yes. Wah. yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I, told, I told my son. Um, you know, he knew a little bit about the game and he's seen it on TV and I've talked to him mm. a little bit. Like, we're going to play tomorrow. And, uh, my, you know, my son just turned six and, uh, yeah, he went pretty psychotic about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have to be careful. Um, he does not have his own device and he mm. will not have his own device for some time. Good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I want my son to actually play like a child should play. Yeah. Not just walk around with a freaking phone or iPad in his face. Like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I want my son to be an outlier. And, and that's a good thing in 2016 yeah. when your kid does not have a device in his face. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he can actually be entertained by things like toys. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, and I'm probably going to get a whole bunch of people like getting aggro on me about that one. <laughs> but whatever. Be creative, folks. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, but it, but we had fun. We We hunted some Pokemon. I uh, taught him a bit about the app, how to use it. He caught a couple himself. And, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow when we're walking to school, I'll let him catch a few more if we find them. That's cool. Yeah, like a, f- a friend of mine had posted on Facebook that he was excited about it because, you know, he wanted to play with his kids. And I thought that was really cool. Like, yeah, no, no, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. But it's something I, I can't play with my whole family because I do have that a three-year-old who darts in and out of streets and out and about and... <laughs> 
possibly into traffic and stuff like yeah. that. I cannot, you can't be focused on a device when you're with someone like that. It's a little more important to just <laughs> put the phone down for a second. Exactly. And when you have a spouse who's maybe not so interested in it and mm. is like shooting you the stink eye, <laughs> you're like, okay, you know, maybe I, I told, I told my son, this is something daddy and daddy knew we'll do this together sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> just the two of us. <laughs> Um, best case scenario, but I mean, but again, I did see whole families out, and I saw guys mm-hmm. driving around on scooters on my first night on a Friday night when I ran out. I went out for a five k walk. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was there was a, a couple of guys on like little fifty cc scooters zooming around, and they had like their their iPhone, like they had some kind of special little cradle for it. Yeah. And I could see they were playing Pokemon Go because yeah. like there were some pretty obscure places around where I live. It's like, uh, why, okay. why would you be here now? Yeah. Why are we all <laughs> gathering in this random dark spot on yeah. Port Island in Kobe? Oh, okay. Yeah, I noticed a couple. There were a couple people that pulled up to, like, the community center here in town is a Pokestop. And as I was there, uh, like, a couple pulled up and kind of pulled into the parking lot and were sitting there for a few minutes and then left. Um, but I did, so I did test this out today. Mm-hmm. I went to the grocery store and I put the phone in my car and put it in my holder. And, you know, so I wasn't like holding my phone or anything like that, just like I would do for like GPS. Turned on the game. And as I went, it was fine. And then after I hit 20 kilometers an hour, all the checkpoints disappeared off the screen. So, like, you can't play it if you're driving. Like, there is like a safety mm. feature built into it. So, anything over 20 kilometers an hour. It just looks like a normal GPS unit. Like there's nothing shows up. So, I mean, potentially, you if you know where, like I know where the gyms are in this area. So if I didn't want to walk to one, I could just drive out there. But it also kind of defeats the purpose of the game because as you walk there, you're collecting, what is it, dust? Uh, what is it? Like something. You're collecting stuff that you need to, to level up your character. So it's kind of pointless. It's about getting out and walking. Yeah, and, and exploring, and and, and also you're not when, earning when you, anything when you're out and walking. That's when the random Pokemon just pop up, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you never know where they're gonna pop up, right? So I mean, it's it's kind of pointless unless you're specifically just driving to a certain location just to go to that gym. You know, but there's so many like where I guess like, like city living. There's so many freaking gyms. It's so dense or everywhere. Oh yeah, there's and, and like, I've, I've I'm actually decided I'm. Um, and my first night I got up to level four, I, I decided that, no, I was level three. I had my first battle, got my mm. butt kicked, <laughs> um, a couple of times, got to level four. I had my butt kicked a few more times, got to level five, won my first gym. Nice. Got really excited, walked away, I believe I tweeted you and said <laughs> I won my first gym. And then I literally, so I'm, so I, I, I literally, I heard cheering a group of people cheering and then I saw the gym change color. <laughs> so yeah. No, yeah, so obviously I was level five because you actually, I'm sorry. Yeah. You have to be level five at least to be able to fight in a gym. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, which yeah. brings me to, by the way, level <laughs> levels, gyms, teams. Yes. Which team are you good, sir? I am the blue team, which you pointed out was blue and not purple. <laughs> You're colorblind. I was like, oh, purple team. I'm, I'm a purple, purple team. Like, There's no purple team. <laughs> I'm team Mystic just because I thought it was purple. <laughs> I'm I, I'm team Valor. I'm red. Um, yeah, I got I got to experience battles from all three teams or all the other two teams today when I went to a park. Oh, yeah. I kind of got ambushed by these three <laughs> high school kids. Like I walk around. There's a st- there's were a park still in your Pokemon. They were trying to. <laughs> Like I, like in the the, the 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 puff of smoke shit. And, yeah. yeah, you prick, you stole my there, Pokemon. There was there was there's a park near the station, so I was I was like, oh, I haven't been to this, and it's really close to my apartment. Like, why haven't I walked over here? So I walk over. There's like three kids sitting on this bench, and I was like, I bet they're playing. And they like look at me, and they're like, I bet he's playing. So I walk around to the he other side. Of rocks the park. at them. Yeah, I was like, get away from the park. No. I so I walk around to the other side because there was also Pokestop like right on the other side of the park. So I walk over there and I'm like, yeah, I got enough. I can take on these guys. So I fight the first guy and So you went to the like in the gym? Yeah, yeah. And I take over the gym and I'm like, nice. 
and immediately get attacked by the one of the other kids who then the after like we battled then i battled him defeated him again and at that point i didn't have anything left i just had like a, a lower level pokemon that i had to claim the gym and then at that point neither one of the other two kids had anything else so this third kid jumps in <laughs> It takes my Pokemon, so then it like changed hands like three times. And as I'm standing there, some other kid rides up on his bike, and this older guy that had been walking around with like kind of near me for part of the day, he walks up. I was like, you know what? I'm just leaving. There's no like, <laughs> yeah, these gyms are just ludicrous, man. Like it, it is literally, especially in the bigger spots. You're just like, you see it changing color like every like thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah. So we've been team we over here at Team Mystic. We've been able to capture most of the. I be I believe there's like six gyms in the area, um, and we currently have five of the six. So we're not doing too bad. There, was, like I said, there was a there's a guy walking around. Team with, Valor's got most of the gyms around here, but yeah. again, again, it it just changes so much, man. Yeah, yeah. So there there was one over by the library, and I walked over there, and there were you know half a dozen people over there today, um, hanging out near the library. So now, by the way, where you, where you live for the, for the podcast listeners out there? Do you live in a big town? No, no, I live in Ibaraki, which is like Inaka, just like countryside. So, okay, so so Andrew's talking. He lives in the countryside. Yeah, no, I mean, and I you, do. You, live, and you're hearing this about like the the people doing this. Yeah, thing. I do live near. I do live near the station. So, like, it's kind of I live in the city, but it's still a very small city. It's not like where I live. No, no, definitely not. Um, like you see, you, I mean, it's just you're walking around. And you're like here in Kobe. You you just see, and I mean, yeah. it must be obviously way off the hook up in Tokyo or or in Osaka. But like even here, you you literally you just see the groups of people. And like everyone's like, you just hear Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go. Yeah, I saw pictures from like Yo Yogi Park, and there's just Pokemon gyms everywhere and stops just completely filling the map. Like. Well, I mean, like, and, and I was in Santa Maria yesterday, and I could I couldn't find a freaking Pokemon, but the, right. the stops were everywhere, <laughs> and within like a few minutes of being in in Santa Maria, they were like, "Ah, oh, your bag's full." Like, yeah, my wow. backpack's full. Like I'm just I can't put any more in it. But at least you were able to stock up on a bunch of stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's never an issue. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't have to worry about running out of anything at any <laughs> point ever. So my question to you. Um, there is the, the shop, like, are you, do you foresee yourself putting any money into this game? Cause I mean, it is no. a free game. No. Um, and there are things that you can purchase, but do you, do you nah, foresee yourself? No, purchasing absolutely anything? not. Mm. No, nope. no, uh, I, I, I will not spend any money on it. I'm, I'm not that invested in anything. To, mm. I mean, well, I, I guess I'm invested in some things, but not a game. Um, you know, I, I'm. I've gotten to this point in life where I, I haven't <laughs> uh, unless like I actually buy a game. And yeah, yeah. Actually, I think the last time I purchased a game would have been when I owned an N64. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then I had to buy cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> but after that point, when it was like PC games, mm. I worked at a, in a game development company and I had friends who were called programmers <laughs> and they were magically able to get me any piece of software or mm. game I wanted for a hundred percent discount. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's convenient. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, basically that's it. But even like, I've just never, I've never gotten invested enough into a game to, to mm. make any in-app purchases and, and, and this as well. And I mean, I made the prediction Right from the get-go, that this is something I'm going to have a lot of fun with for probably a few weeks. Yeah. And then I'll move on. Yeah, I mean... Because uh, I'm that kind of guy. Because I right. got my podcasts to do, and I got right. my... I'm, yeah, I'm a, I, my wildlife photography. I've got actually other, like, real-world activities. Well, are yeah. Po- are, are podcasts real-world activities? Yes, they are. Sure. But um, <laughs> I, I have other outside activities that I, that I, I you know, like to engage in. Yeah. Right. Well, and uh, and I think I'll stick around for a little bit just because it's summer vacation for me. Yeah, yeah, of course. You of know, course. and and it hit at like the perfect time. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'll be playing so. throughout the summer as well. But I mean, like you know, I have no illusions. I'm not trying to air quotes here c- compete. 
Mm. When there's people who like will get to level 15, 16, 17 this weekend. Oh, there's somebody that just took over one of the gyms here that's 21. There was a guy on uh, <laughs> there was, there was a guy on Friday night. Friday night, I, I tried to have a gym battle with him. He was like level fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, a, a friend and like of my, it, it, it only come out that day. Yeah, a like, friend of mine texted me and was like, "I don't know what's going on. I think somebody's cheating. They've already got like you know this elusive Pokemon and they're really high level and they've already taken over two of the gyms in my town." And he's like, "I can't do anything now." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't know. Maybe he's just walking more than you are, dude. I don't know." <laughs> I think I think that guy just has no life and no job. I guess. Yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, there are people, and there are people who, like, you know, there, there was that, 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 you know, we talked about it in the last episode. That story that was going all, you know, viral all around media, English speaking media, of the Australian guy who quit his job to be a full time Pokemon Go player. That's he didn't have a real job. Before. Oh no, I, didn't. <laughs> I, I think I think part time at a coffee shop. I don't know. I... Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people in Japan, a lot of adults mm. who don't have those jobs either. They're called otaku. Yeah, needs. <laughs> you know, they're in their 40s and they live at home with mom and dad. Yeah. And they have the um, infinite amounts of time, the infinite amounts of time because mom and dad still support them and they can wander around all day and all night with no responsibility and but, just collect Pokemon. But hey, at least they're getting outside, right? Mm. So exactly, but but at the end of the day, I can't compete with like people like oh, that, no. and I don't want to, and I don't even want to try. Therefore, I'm not going to buy stuff. No, like, and that's that was what I was thinking about when I was walking around today. I was like, I mean, I'm level, I'm almost level nine. Like some of these people are a lot higher level than me. At what point am I going to go? I I just can't compete with this because right, like, you can't you can't beat anyone in the gyms. Yeah, like at what point? I mean, I'm lucky right now that they're all for the most part blue, but. You know what? What happens when my Pokemon aren't high left level? And you know, and I was walking around today. I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna go home." I was like, "No, I need to keep walking because then, if I keep walking, then I'll get more Stardust, and then I can level up my my Pokemon." So I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna keep walking until <laughs> I can get more but Stardust." That's great. That's great. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's you're you're out moving around. You're getting physically yeah, active. Yeah. That's a good thing. You're it's not in your car problem. driving around. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a crazy world we live in, sir. It's true. And uh, but it is it is a Pokemon Go world. Yes. Now in Japan, um, yes. do you do you think this will be something that's going to keep on going for a long time here in Japan? I I think it depends on what they kind of what they roll out in in means of like support for the game, like. Right now they've got the the sponsored Pokestop, so you know if you go to McDonald's, um, but there really isn't anything special yet with going to McDonald's, you know, at being a Pokestop. Um, now, unless they somehow say, "Hey, you know, like coming get special Pokemon," right, here. right, right, or like you know, exclusive drops here for different you know things that maybe you can only buy in the store or or stuff like that. Um, there's really there really hasn't been like any big incentive to go to mcdonald's other than the I, fact that it's a pokestop yeah you know? yeah and I, literally i've seen just like and i didn't go to mcdonald's itself but i was really near one yesterday and then it showed up like mcdonald's i'm loving it pokestop yeah but then there's like a million pokestops all around it right too. and so like i mean they do also have a catalog of like 700 other pokemon so you you would assume that eventually they will start coming out with you know other ones but yeah i mean it depends on, you know, how involved people get with the game. And, I mean, it seems to be a lot. I mean, ironically, I was at a vending machine and it had a big sign up for, like, the one-year anniversary of Ingress. <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh -huh. how, how ironic <laughs> that this sign is here, you know, advertising Ingress that n virtually nobody plays in Japan. <laughs> and, you know, I'm playing Pokemon Go <laughs> made by the same company. Um, oh, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. in a, a year from now, are we going to see, hey, Pokemon Go, if you buy this soda, you get some coins? Like, is that what it's going to be in a year? I don't know. Um, now, it, I wonder how it's going to work with, like, expandability. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of areas, like, you know, I just think of, like, the island where I live. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have opportunities to really just like, go off into the city. 
Right. Um, you know, I'm a family man. I work a lot. And then I come home to my family, you know, I cycle back home on the, the, the island mm. in, in, in Osaka Bay here. And, um, you know, there's quite a few, like, pokey stops and pokey gyms, like, in the kind of central area. But on the outskirts, there aren't. But I wonder if there's going to be an opportunity for people to be able to, like, expand that and spread things out more. Yeah, I don't know. and, and I don't know how that works, but... Like, are they going to get to the point where they allow people to make their own stops um which like like with geocaching right like you right know, with geocaching once you have your account and you get a bit of experience you know it's time to start placing your own caches and, yeah and spreading the game and spreading the joy right which you know that can also lead into some you know some trouble depending on where you decide that you're going to put your possibly possibly because, um, because with geocaching there are actual volunteer assessors mm -hmm. like you know people you 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 submit all the information your coordinates your all this information but there's actually a person who has to approve it uh, okay i don't know how. who knows i mean like i said it it really depends on what what kind of support they they give the game you know six months a year into it because you know everybody's playing it now but you know it's going to be like any other game at some point there's not going to be this many people playing it you know because Right now, it's exciting, and everyone's mm, talking yeah. about it, and it's something new, or something that not necessarily new, but just something that's very accessible to pretty much anybody. Um, you know, six months to a year, we'll see what what they're doing to keep players, you know, coming back to the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it will be an interesting, an interesting thing to watch. Um, I pretty much can guarantee that in six months from now, I won't be playing it. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I, for I, I feel the same way. Like I, I, I don't know how long I'll stick with it, but um, I mean, what I've played so far over the past weekend, I've really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with it. Um, and you know, I've gone out multiple times during the day. You know, in the morning, afternoon, <laughs> today I went out mm. a couple of times. So, oh, and, and I, I definitely will be going out too. Um, not tonight. But in the following days, and, and, and sometimes I'll go with my son and check things out. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, so Pokemon No is no more. Pokemon yes. Go is here in Japan. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. It is a, a much newer beast than in mm -hmm. America, um, of course, where, where it has been for a very long time, like a month. Yeah, <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> Seems like a long and 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 when you're speaking of this kind of thing, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, well, hey, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. We will have updates in the future, possibly about Pokemon Go or other things like this. But it's it's, it's really been fun to do this kind of off the cuff, yeah, um, kind of tech game chat with you. No problem. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, so we're recording this, guys, out there, guys and gals listening on the 24th of July. And this will come out midweek, a few days later, um, right after. So episode 117 will come out, and this will be out probably just a day or two after that. Wow. You're going to get a two-episode week. Man. Nice. Nice. Lucky. <laughs> lucky. Lucky, you guys. Um, Andrew, where can people find you online, uh, you know, if they're curious to check out your, your stuff? Yeah, well, you can have a, head over to Facebook.com slash Higgins in Japan. Or if you just, just do a search on YouTube for Higgins in Japan, um, I've got videos up. And on my Facebook page, I've got pictures that I post from time to time. And, you know, you can follow me on Twitter and all that good stuff. So Cool. Awesome. So, yeah. guys, go over to Facebook.com slash Higgins in Japan and search the YouTubes for Higgins in Japan. All cool. that good stuff. <laughs> awesome. All right. And, of course, all of those links will be in the show notes at JustJapanStuff.com. <laughs> All right, I want to thank Andrew for taking the time to come back on the Just Japan podcast again. Andrew is an awesome guy, and he is a, a frequent uh, guest on the podcast, and we love our regulars. So thank you, 
so much, Andrew. Of course, you can find all of his stuff over on Facebook at Higgins in Japan. And, um, of course, all the links to everything he talked about tonight will be in the show notes at JustJapanStuff.com. Um, yeah, so it's the summer. Uh, a special episode here. We're going to have another break. I mean, this it's episode number 118. Episode 119 will be dropping a few days after this. Um, and that's going to be an episode all about leading up to the Rio Games, uh, the, the Rio Olympics, and talking about athletics and sports and whatnot here in Japan. Um, of course, you can always find me on Twitter at Jayland Kev, on Instagram at Jayland Kev. Oh, go follow me on Instagram. Go follow me on Twitter. Um, go check out the Just Japan podcast Facebook page. Go love it. Go like it. Go share it. It's a cool place to be. Of course, you can always find me on YouTube at Busan Kevin and Jayland Kev. Those links will be in the show notes at JustJapanStuff.com because, you know, that's where the links are, right? I already mentioned that, I think, a little bit a while ago. Um... Yeah, um, you can always email the Just Japan Podcast at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. We love your emails. I love feedback, guys. Hey, if you got questions about Japan, here, let's let's get the mailbag uh, section of the show going again for a few episodes. If you have any questions about Japan, send them to me at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. You got a question about Japan, again, email it to me at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. Or, you know, send it to me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, all those places. Not YouTube, because I don't check the messages or comments on YouTube. There's an interesting thing, guys. I'm, I'm big into YouTube. I put a lot of videos on YouTube. But if you actually want to communicate with me, you need to do it via Twitter or Facebook, <laughs> to be honest. Or comments on the, in, in the, on the, the, the show notes, the, the, the blog and stuff, justjapanstuff.com. Um, yeah, so that does it for another week of the podcast. Um, remember, go check out our Patreon campaign. We've got a lot of new incentives. A few people have already jumped on board to support the Just Japan podcast on Patreon. And they're going to be getting a bonus podcast that only patrons on Patreon can get. So check out patreon.com slash Just Japan podcast. That link will be in the show notes too. Um, I'm getting more serious about the podcast, guys, and I think you've you've maybe have noticed that recently. Um, all the other things like YouTube and this and that are kind of going a little bit not to the wayside, but the emphasis, my focus, my passion, my love is the podcast, and I want to grow it into something bigger and better, and maybe some other things. Um, of course, you'll know that I am a Kobe PR ambassador, a Kobe City public relations ambassador on social media. I promote this amazing city that I live in on social media, and uh, that's a very cool thing. Check out those links. Those links are going to be in the show notes to some really just cool content about the city of Kobe, videos, pictures, all kinds of stuff. Go check those out, and uh, you know we want more people to come to the city because you know what? When people think of Japan, they think of Tokyo, they think of Osaka, Kyoto, but not a lot of people who don't live in Japan think about Kobe. And Kobe's got a lot to offer. It's a cool city. I love it. I've been here for eight years. I think it's the cat's meow. Meow. Um, so go check out the links in the show notes for all the Kobe PR ambassador stuff. And, and you can check out more coolness about the city of Kobe here in Japan. And you know what? If you're going to be in Japan, get your butt over here, okay? If you're in Japan, you're going to be touring around the summer, get your butt over here. You know, check it on out. Um, send me a message if you're going to be around. I might be able to meet you. You never know. I do work during the summer. My schedule is pretty tight. But there is always a possibility that maybe we can hook up uh, for coffee or a little I've, I've, I've given people walking tours actually in the past um or beer whatever it may be so send me a message and we'll see what we can do and uh, yeah so that's it guys and gals out there in just japan podcast averse pokemon go we talked about it yep it's a thing it's a big thing here in japan finally because it's only like a little over a week old when you're listening to this um yeah so of course please you can help me out by sharing the heck out of this podcast guys you know re like retweet the link like when i send this out on twitter please retweet it re if you're a twitter person retweet the heck out of it if um you know if what you know i share the link on facebook share it please share the podcast on the facebook's every, every one of you every one of you here is my command i command you to share the just japan this, this is your call to action i'm asking you awesome people if you love this podcast to take action 
and make the podcast spread it to more people get more people listening to the just japan podcast so all of you amazing just japan podcast listeners i'm i'm sending you out a call a call of action i want you guys to uh this month or this episode or another episode something at least one episode um share it share it on your facebook share it on your twitter share it with through your email your g plus your instagram something somehow <laughs> all right that's how you can share your love all right guys take care my name is kevin o'shea i am the host of the just japan podcast i'm a canadian who lives and works in kobe japan and i'm talking to you from japan about stuff in japan and there you go so no matter where you are in the world i hope you are happy i hope you're healthy and safe and i'll be talking to you real soon <laughs>